okay, 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 okay. Random shred, kind of. But there was a purpose here. The purpose is to work on transitions. It's something that is often overlooked. And I'm not talking about transition of keys. I'm talking about mechanical transitions, things that you can work on actively when you're practicing that is going to allow you to be completely free of patterns eventually. I'll show you exactly how it's done. It's super fun, super easy, and very creative too, hopefully. And that's coming up. Hi, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players like all of us find our unique voice on the instrument, develop it to tell our own personal musical story. And in order to do that, there's a lot of things that we can work with. We'll take our lifetime more than that. But today we're going to work on freeing ourselves from the mechanical aspect of playing. For this, we're going to work in a Dorian context. So G Dorian is our key, which means that the whole backing track is going to work with uh, that scale of G Dorian. Okay, so you can't go wrong as long as you follow those notes. But the thing we're going to do here is try to break free from the patterns, because if you can be free from playing in, in patterns and zones of the fretboard and always kind of breaking that habit when you feel that you're stuck in a box. If we can do that, that's going to free ourselves to, to, to search for the, the thread, the musical thread that is going to guide you, guide us through our improvisation somewhere else. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this. Let's say that we have, you know, a two minute solo to do over this thing. And uh, a lot of players thread the, the home position, the home base, the thing that they, you know, attach to is that first minor pentatonic bar. And that's great. All those notes are going to work. And eventually maybe you learn position number two, which gives you a sense of a little bit more freedom because now you're not tied to just one position, but it's still not completely freeing because you're still tied to those positions. And in order to break free from those, we need to actively work on that and find transitional points, tra like exercises that are going to allow you to really navigate through these positions one after the other. Here's the thing with exercises. Exercises can appear a little bit mechanical. Yes, they are. But there's something fundamental that happens when you work on these exercises. It's not just, you know, learning different licks. That's not what's happening. What's happening really is kind of invisible. It happens in the back in the background where when you're working on something like this, for example, your fingers are associating with the sound that you're hearing movements. It's subconscious, right? But next time when you want to replicate that kind of feeling, well, your fingers are going to kind of remember what they were doing when you were working on these exercises, and it'll come back naturally in your playing. And that's exactly what you're doing. That's what brought you from first learning the minor pentatonic scale to this. be able to, to be free to do those things. Your fingers kind of have a mind of their own and they remember how to, what they should do in order to, to get that sound out of your instrument. It's just like when I'm talking to you. Or I'm, first you listen. When a baby learns how to speak, he listens and then he babbles, replicates those sounds, and then it just comes out without having to think about the, the placement of the mouth and all that. It's exactly what's happening. So today we're going to work on those transitions, and it's going to it's going to come out at some point, and you're playing very naturally. So here is an example, just an example of an exercise that you can do. Let's say that we are uh, working with the first two strings. Okay, we're in G Dorian. Here's our backing track, and I'm going to take I'm going to start from this zone of the fretboard. Um, I'm going to play uh, string number two, frets five. 7, 8, and 5, 7, 8. Okay. 
here, I'm in that first box of the minor pentatonic, the, the cage system, the E position. And if I don't do anything about it, I'm going to be stuck. So I'm going to work on that transition, and I'm going to look at the next position up. And if I do that, I will have... I'll have this. So if, if I look at the first two strings, those are the next two notes that I find. So one exercise could be simply... Something like that, where you're playing six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, in one box, and then move to the next one. Okay, very simple exercise, first step, and then you just kind of explore with the context. And you don't have to, when you, when you do these exercises, I, I wouldn't recommend doing it, um, this is very, you, you probably never heard this before, but I would recommend actually not doing it with a metronome first. Here's why. The metronome, yes, it will help you get in, in sync, but if you work with a metronome, you're going to focus on that rhythm element, which is super important, yes. But I think the object here is to be free to express ourselves, and what I would suggest doing instead of that is focusing on, on hearing internally the next note. So in, in my mind, ba, 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 da, 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 da. And that can be done very slow. That's okay. Because if you do that, you are strengthening that connection that happens between your hearing and what you're doing to execute that sound that you're hearing before you do it. That, and if you just work with the, the metronome, then it's easy to forget about that aspect of playing, which is really, really important in improvisation. Then, yes, you work with the metronome once you internalize those sounds. But that's very, very important. So that's one example. But that could become very mechanical at some point, right? Right? So maybe we can break that by doing something like skip that note to the next. Maybe that. Sorry. And then do that on the second position. And if you make a mistake, you correct yourself, and, and your ear should match what you're playing. And then eventually, those exercises are going to come out in your playing, and they are not just going to come out by your fingers playing, you know, uh, random shapes. Because you spend the time anticipating the sound of the note, your mind is going to direct what your fingers should do to, um, with the, the goal of replicating what's in your mind. That's the real important thing. And you could apply, apply this to anything, not just working on those transitions, but anything. Da -da -ba -da -bum, da -da -ba -da -ba. Okay, that's what I want. That's the end goal. Ba -da -ba -da -bum. I kind of visualize. Ba -da -ba -da -bum kind of the movement and try to replicate that. On the guitar. So it's really, really important to involve your inner ear with anything you do. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue exploring this a little bit. This is really a fun exploration game, I think. Maybe we want to focus on uh, strings three and four here. And I'm gonna start in this zone of the fretboard. I'll have, th I'll have this shape. Um, let's make a transition lower. Okay, that's going to be our exercise. And then on the next position. Very, very slow because my mind was involved in the process and I was trying to anticipate the sound of what I was going to do here. That's what I had for you today. It's uh, going to be a very focused type of practice. It's not the kind of practice where your mind can be somewhere else and you're just playing. That practice, passive practice, that's, you know, in front of the TV when you're just kind of like... 
mechanically playing those things, which has its purpose. But I'm talking about focused practice. Maybe do this 10, 15 minutes every day with no distractions, and you really have to know what you're going to work on. And in this case, it's working on those transitions. But it could be anything. It could be um, pitch with bends. Anything. But th that aspect of practicing is very, very important. And um, that's what I had for you today. You can download this loop that you're hearing right now and a few exercises like this one that are targeting that area of playing for free. All you need to do is visit the link below, enter a valid email address, and I'll be sending you that right away. And if you have not subscribed yet to this channel, you probably should because every single week, three videos like this one come out helping us find our voice, develop it to become better players, better communicators on this instrument. And thanks so much for watching this video. Practice well. I'll see you next time.